How to lose the culture war 101. A lesson the left really needs to listen to. Because when you get a guy in whitey tidies walking around and shaking his junk in front of children and gyrating and spreading his legs and present, like, how do you want to describe what the guy did? When he spreads himself for kids. Holy crap. Show that to people. You'll lose the culture war. Fine. But I'll tell you what else. Ban coal and wood fired fired pizzerias. And uh, y'all are going to live to regret it. Now, maybe there's an important question about overpopulation. Maybe there's an important question about we can't have infinite coal fired pizzas. Too much carbon, perhaps too much waste. I don't know. Look, man. I think humans create pollution. I think pollution is bad. I think hyper concentrations of people destroy local uh, environments in very, very bad ways. I think humans need to spread out, decentralize and get away from the cities, become more self-sustainable, maybe have their own animals and stop living in these big, nasty cities. But I will tell you this. Y'all created urban liberals and y'all are living in it. They now want to ban far left. Now I see cracks down on coal and wood fired pizzerias to fight climate change. Yo, people are going to lose their minds. Here's proof. Dave Portnoy, not a conservative, says, if this happens, I'll lead a riot. You know, Dave Portnoy likes to go around sampling pizza. Sounds fun. Pizza is delicious. Me, I actually had this period where I went and tried every pod Thai restaurant, every Thai restaurant in Chicago. And um, shout out, I think the best one I ever went to was probably Joy's. I think, I don't know if it still exists, but uh, we just, me and my brother, we love pod Thai. So it's like, whenever we were, we're going to go out for eat, we're like, let's try another restaurant. See, we can find the best one. And they were the best. They were the absolute best. They have two locations, I think. Noodle in the Pot and Joy's. Those are my favorite. But that was like, that was like 15 years ago. Yeah, seriously, like 15 years ago. But anyway, uh, uh, Stool Presidente, Dave Portnoy, he travels around trying out pizzas. And so now you're telling him, and in New York, they're going to say no more coal and wood-fired pizza? What am I going to get? Electric stove pizza? Oh, geez. Now you're, now you're, oh, you're getting dangerous there. There is something special about coal-fired pizza. Oh, I love it. Now, most of you probably have wood-fired pizzeria, right? You got the big stove. They put the wood, the wood in it. The wood burns. That adds something special to the pizza. It really does. Then you've got coal. Coal is something else. Amazing. That's why we like grilling. It, you get better flavor. You know, we're not, we're not, I'm not going to play that that Hank, uh, Hank Hill, you know, propane makes my meat taste like meat. No, we like it when we cook our food with mesquite and with other, with wood or coal. We like that special grilled taste to it. Here's the story from Post Millennial. New York City pizza is an iconic as Lady Liberty, Liberty and the Empire State Building. The tradition stretches far back in the early 20th century when Italian immigrants came to Manhattan and then to Brooklyn, building wood-fired brick ovens and creating what has become a world-renowned delicacy. Now they want to do away with the best pizza that exists in the world, all in the service of climate alarmism. Let me tell y'all a story, or I'll just break it down for you. You ever have pizza in Chicago? If you're a tourist and you go to Chicago, they're going to, get, they're going to tell you to get Giordano's or Uno's or Lumonati's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all delicious, okay? They're good pizzas, fine. I don't know if Leona still exists, but um, look. Real Chicago pizza is not deep dish. Deep dish is tourist pizza. When we grew up, when we ordered pizzas, here's what you'd get. The crust is thick and firm. No, there's, there's like New York pizza's got the big crust in the back that rises. And then it's flat like Domino's or Papa John's. Chicago was always a firmer crust that was completely flat, cut into squares. Anywhere you'd go, we'd order pizza. We had Villa Rosa in Chicago on the south side. And you'd get the pizza, you'd tear open the paper, and it was cut into little squares, not pie slices. That's Chicago. New York. Chicago. People often joke about, like, who's got better pizza? There's no question. Pizza is New York pizza. And I'm from Chicago. It was invented there. I'm pretty sure it was invented there. It's not Italian. The, it, it, is, it is a facsimile of an Italian of pizza where you take bread, you put stuff on it, olive oil, you bake it, and it's got vegetables. I knew an Italian guy who once made a pizza, and he asked me, he's like, he's like, hey, Tim, do you want any pizza? And I was like, yeah. And then he hands me a piece of bread with zucchini and olive oil, and it's baked. And I was like, all right, I get it. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's, that's pizza from Italy. Now, 
pizza, bread, sauce, cheese, and then whatever else. Pineapple, maybe? It's world-renowned. World-renowned. This is what they do. They want you to live in the pods. They want you to eat the bugs. And they say you'll be happy. But they want to take from you pizza? Okay. Keep voting for them. Now, okay, they're not saying they're banning pizza outright. But the thing about New York pizza is it's cooked in a very specific way. When I was down in Miami, no, was this, was this Miami or was this Tampa? There, let's put it this way. There are, there are pizza shops around the world that talk about how they can make a New York pizza. And they can't. They try. They get close. But they'll say something like New York style pizza here. There was even a place in Florida that shipped water from New York all their ingredients sourced from New York, including the water, to make sure they got it right. The problem, the humidity is different. The altitude is different. And that matters when cooking pizza. You're in a higher altitude. It's a lot harder. So this, uh, this, this writer who wrote this, Libby, she says, My great-grandfather Luca was among those who came to New York from Italy and sought to earn his living and start a family. He came from Sicily and found work as a baker. He began making little pies with pomodoro and cheese, and it wasn't long before he was building his own brick oven in Brooklyn. The new plan from the geniuses at the city level is to do away with this tradition, the tradition of my ancestors, and to make pizzerias that use the old time, this, that use the old time method, not only pay out the nose to keep doing it, but to make the pizza a shed of its former glory. All New Yorkers deserve to breathe healthy air. They got to cut emissions by 75%. So what does it mean? It means they have to pay to install emission control devices. The city wants to take away one of the major draws to the city. It's pizza places. Yo, they got Brothers Pizza. It's like a dollar slice. That was, I don't know if it still is. I haven't been there in a minute. You walk down the street, you walk in, you get a big old slice of New York style pizza. Man, that was one of the best things about it. It's, it's going to cost up to $20,000 to install this. And you know, they can't do it. So what's going to happen? Many of these shops will close down. Many of them will switch to... <laughs> electric ovens. You want to have an electric oven pizza? By all means. But here's my point. To lay off the, uh, the heavy, hokey pizza stuff, it's simply this. They are gutting from you your tra traditions. And I can certainly understand we can't live in a world of, of infinite resource. That means that if we produce waste and we produce too much at a certain point, we got to say, sorry, guys. And so now only the wealthiest of the pizza shops will be able to, to sell these kinds of pizzas. You're going to find one shop. It's going to be like one or two, and there's going to be a line at the door, and it's going to be authentic New York brick, brick oven pizza. And you're going to say you can't get it anywhere else. All these other shops, they got pizza, electric stove. But if you want that good OG traditional slice, but you know what? Maybe that's why they really don't care about our southern border. Because you bring in people who don't know of our traditions. You bring in people who don't know the good things that we have fought to create and the things that we've invented. And they can't complain about it because they don't know it exists. And that's the point. When they say you will own nothing and you will be happy, they are not wrong. Maybe not you personally, but many people, if they don't know it exists, they can't miss it. That's the truth. Eric Tubman said, I have freed many slaves. I would have freed many more if only they knew they were slaves. And it's kind of a sad reality. Many of these people didn't have any idea. If they knew what freedom was, if they knew what they were owed for their labor, then they might actually be upset. But this is why they didn't want slaves learning to read and write. Not every single one, but for the most part. I, I'm just trying to say I'm not trying to be absolute, but for the most part, it was like, you can't teach them to read and write. If they learn, heavens. It's like that movie, what is it, Ants, I think? Or is it a Bugs? I don't know, one of them. Where the, the grasshoppers are like, if these ants realize that there's more of them than us, we're in serious trouble. If people are able to learn of good and evil, if people are able to learn of the benefits of, of a free market and freedom, they're going to fight for it. So they want to take that knowledge away from you. How can you do it? Well, look. You bring in enough people who don't know of our traditions and our laws, and then one day it'll be 49 to 51. 49% of the people saying, no way, man. This is a tradition. We have to maintain this. But 51 saying, we don't know, we don't care, and we vote against you. So, is it just pizza? 
Maybe not. Next segment's coming up tonight at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.